Hello students, we have earlier discussed about connective tissue proper. Now my point is the second type of connective tissue that is vascular connective tissue. As the world reveals to you, this one is vascular that means it has the conduction power and it is a kind of connective tissue that means it can connect to different or similar kind of things. Now the next point is the vascular connective tissue this one is a fluid contained that's why it can flow everywhere in our body and can connect every organ of the body. Now a proper definition of connective tissue vascular connective tissue is it's a fluid connective tissue which is mainly made up of matrix although some fibers contains are also present but this one is mainly made up of matrix and in this kind of tissue we can conclude the following first one is blood and the another one is lymph then first of all we will discuss regard to blood so next the point is what is blood it's a fluid connective tissue or vascular connective tissue which is actually made up of two kind of things these are blood corpuscles or you can say blood cells and the second one thing is plasma in our body five approximately 5.5 to 6 liter blood is present. Approximately 5.5 to 6 liter blood is present. Now what are the components of blood? Just before of that I want to tell you blood formation process is called as hemopoiesis and this one happens in bone marrow and this one happens in bone marrow mainly. Now what are the components of blood? Blood is mainly made up of two kind of substances. The first one is a non-living substance and another one is a living substance. The non-living contained or fluid contained of blood is called as plasma which makes the 55% part of blood. And rest of the 45% part is made up of cells which are called as blood corpuscles. Now plasma can be further categorized into category. The main component or main part of plasma is made up of water. 90% part of plasma is made up of actually water. And rest of the 10% part, rest of the 10% part is made up of metal in which organic and inorganic both kind of contains are present. The organic content makes the 9% part of this metal and rest of the 1% part is made up of inorganic content. In the 1% part we can conclude salts and ions along with the gases present in blood like O2, CO2, ammonia. While in organic part the maximum part is made up of protein. It's approximately 6 to 7 percent in which albumin, globulin, fibrin, thrombin, such a kind of proteins are present. While the rest of the 2 to 3 percent part is made up of various metals like carbohydrate, fat or lipid, vitamins, hormones, excrete product etc. Now the next point comes regard to blood corpuses. So this one is over about the plasma which makes the non-living or fluid contained part of blood. Now the living part that means the blood corpuses these can categorize in three category. The first one is called as RBC red blood cells. Second one is called as WBC white blood cell. Well the third one is called as thrombocytes. 
red blood cells the original name of red blood cells or the scientific name of red blood cell is erythrocytes while just like that wbc are called as leukocytes and the third one the common name of third one is platelets actually while the scientific name of platelet is thrombocyte we will take each and every part of blood and discuss now the first part of blood is plasma as i told you this one makes the 55% part of blood and it's actually the non living content of blood this one is made up of water and matter which can be further categorized in organic and inorganic matter so the main work of plasma is it makes the water and ion balance in body it's also helpful in the conduction of various substances like different kind of digestive food like glucose fatty acids amino acids etc along with it uh, along with it's also helpful in the transportation of hormones vitamins and it's also helpful in a minute way it's also helpful in the transportation of various gases which can dissolve in the blood plasma and conduct everywhere in the body while the second contained is blood corpuscles which are of three kind the first one is called as rbc it's red blood cell or red blood corpuscle the scientific name of this is erythrocyte erythro means red cyte means cell. so these are red in color that's why this name is given to them formation of red blood cell is called as erythropoiesis again this one happens in bone marrow these are usually discoidal in shape before maturity maturity these are spherical in shape and after that they become enucleated to retain more and more hemoglobin in it and form the discoidal shape these contain hemoglobin which is actually made up of ferrous content it's a metalloprotein that is made up of ferrous content and that's why this appears red in color so the main function of this hemoglobin act as the respiratory pigment so the main function of rbc is conduction of oxygen or transportation of oxygen 97% oxygen can be transported as oxyhemoglobin and the life span of rbc is 120 days in human being now the next point is regard to wbc the second kind of blood cell wbc means white blood cells although these are not white in color these are devoid of color actually or you can say these are colorless that's why the another scientific name is given to them that is leukocyte leuco devoid of color cyte cells so these are colorless cells these are irregular in shape these are irregular in shape these are only the true cells present in blood because they always contain nuclei in them but the another feature of wbc their nuclei may be differentiated in various lobes so the another feature is lobe nuclei life span vary in wbc different kind of wbc are present now the configuration of wbc or the classification of wbc we can further divide wbc on the basis of presence of granule in cytoplasm if the granules are present then the cells are called as granulocytes cyte cells granulo granule containing while if granules are absent in the cytoplasm then these are called as a granulocyte now these can further divided on the basis on the basis of their function 
granulocyte can be categorized in three categories on the basis of their function and the color obtained by the stain. The first one is called as acidophil. These are acid loving cells. Second one is actually stained by basic stain that's why called as basophil. And the third one is actually called as neutrophil. While the second one, agranulocytes are further classified as monocyte and lymphocytes. Now I am going to diagram of each kind of cell so that you can understand what's the structural difference in them. First I will take acidophil. As I told you, this one is granule containing cell and its nuclear is lobed. Lobe nuclear, either two, usually two lobes of nuclear is present in acidophil and acidic stain is actually eosin. That's why these are also known as eosinophils. In the cytoplasm, you can see the granules. Now the second one is called as basophil because this one stained by the basic stain and its nuclear is divided in two to three lobes. Usually you can see the three lobes of nucleus just like this and its pigments are stained by basic stain. Its granules are stained by basic stain. The third kind of granulocyte is neutrophil which look like like this. It contains multi lobe nuclear which is usually differentiated in five lobes. And this one contains the granules which can be stained by neutral stain. The another category is agran regard to agranulocyte in which the first cell is monocyte that contains kidney shaped nucleus or bean shaped nucleus and in the cytoplasm no granules are found. While the last one lymphocyte this one is a kind of cell that having the large spherical nuclei and because of the presence of large spherical nuclei its cytoplasm become peripheral. Almost the complete part of cell is actually covered by the nuclei. Now the function of each and every kind of cell, acidophil, this one is phagocytic in nature and usually release histamine at the time of allergic reaction. So the number of acidophil usually increases during allergic reaction. Basophils, these are the cells. Basophils are the cells which actually increase their number at the time of allergic reaction because it can also show the secretion of histamine or I can say this one is the main responsible for the allergic reaction. The next one is neutrophils. These are phagocytic cells which can engulf the pathogen enters in our body. Neutrophils, number of neutrophils usually increases at the time of infection like bacterial infection usually increases the number of neutrophils. While next one is the monocyte, it's also known as wandering cells because they can show diapodosis, they can move out of vessels, so they can show diapodosis and because of that they can cross they can cross the blood vessels. That's why these are called as wandering cells. Well, the last one is lymphocyte. As the word reveals to you, these are the sites or cells which can ma attain maturity in lymph nodes. Basically, lymphocytes get collected in lymph nodes and act with lymph. These are the cells that can produce antibody. These can categorize in two categories. The first one is T lymphocyte and another one is B lymphocyte. B attain the majority in bone marrow while T attain the majority in thymus gland and both are helpful in the formation of our immune system. Either forming the immune system or can engulf the whole material like engulf the bacteria or can show the allergic reaction 
this these wbc can protect us that's why these are commonly called as soldier of our body now the last one is platelets these are formed by the fragmentation of wbc and rbc so these are actually non true cells these are always without nucleus but these can contain a specific kind of protein called as thromboplastin and because of the presence of thromboplastin these cells are called as thrombocytes these are helpful in the blood clotting the main function of platelet is blood clotting breaking platelet releases thromboplastin which act as an enzyme and a sequential biochemical process starts and because of that blood clotting happens this is over about blood now the last part of vascular connective tissue is lymph lymph is formed in lymphoid tissue and this is basically formed by the filtration of blood that means if we remove rbc and some specific protein like fibrin thrombin etc then the remaining part of blood is called as lymph and it form the lymphatic system it also act as the middleman in bod our body like if blood wants to diffuse anything towards cell first of all this one is received by lymph and later on that is move towards cells or tissue same like that if cells reveal something that will move towards blood via lymph you can take the example of oxygen and co2 like this and now you can understand why i am saying this one act as the middleman of blood it's also called as tissue fluid and it's also helpful in the transportation of various substance by doing work as middleman so it's over about vascular connective tissue thank you students